Hello, my name's Matthew Harrison. I'm a scientist at the Tasmanian Institute of Agriculture. Here I just want to look at different genotypes, uh, and specifically in Apsim Next Generation, and a little bit, uh, and I'll explain a little bit about how the actual model works, the underlying components to the model, and how you can look at the how a model is actually calculated. So if you, well, the actual underlying structure of the model. So what I've done here is I've opened up an ex a wheat example. So to do that, I've went to Home, I've hit Open an example. Go to your C, Program Files, AppSim Next Generation Examples directory. Go to the bottom, open up Wheat. Save it to a new location, save it to your own directory. Right click, hit Run AppSim just to make sure it runs. Uh, if it doesn't run, diagnose the error. Run again. It should run without error. Then you'll see some of your results if you hit this graph. You can also go down here and uh, and look at the individual data uh, and then if you want to actually have a look at the underlying components of the model if we go uh, you would intuitively think it was in wheat so if you actually right click on this uh, and then you go show model structure it'll come up with a little plus arrow and then you can look at each of the individual components in the model these title page, these little memos here thing are quite useful. So this is showing the plant modelling framework, the authors, Hamish Brown, Neil Huth and Dean Olsworth. Uh, I encourage you to read carefully through each of these descriptions because they're very useful. Uh, you can't actually modify any of this, this is read only, but it's useful for showing the underlying structure. Now each of these icons actually means something different. So Arbitrator means, uh, well it's pretty self-explanatory, it's trying to balance or arbitrate multiple competing demands uh, and so that's that's thinking about things like dry matter partitioning nitrogen partitioning water uptake for example then you've got phenology so phenology is quite a complicated thing so if you think about phenology well actually if you read this description it's quite it's quite good it's very explanatory so if you Generally, phenology in cereals is driven by three things: so temperature, photo period, and vernalisation. And it's got, uh, and that drives final leaf number. Leaf number is a function of phenology, and it's shown how it's calculated in the model there. Then it's got how thermal time is calculated. And so, if you expand these little things, it's showing you the actual graph that's used. So the, so here's the temperature. And here's the function. So it's simplified and the model just, if it's 8 degrees, it comes along and interpolates this line and says, OK, I've got to use a value of 10, so on and so forth. It's got uh, memos for some of them, not for all of them, that shows you what's actually being done. Then we've got an interpolation method. This cross here means multiplication, so it's going to multiply everything below it. Uh, it's got a memo there. Uh, then we have a temperature response profile. You can see the graph there, so that's obviously a little bit different and it will it will interpolate that graph and we have photo period uh, perceived photo period so photo period is driven by twilight angle twilight angle is the uh, value for which it's a it's actually halfway between day and night so it's saying the center of the Sun is six degrees below the horizon uh, and then we have apex the apex below ground this little C here means it's a constant um, and then we've got a number of different other variables there. So as you can see, all of that is just in phenology. And so you can see the various components that are used by the model developers in phenology. So it's quite complicated. But it's very useful if you want to find out what values they've used to build a particular cultivar or differences between cultivars. So then you've got different uh, plant components. So it's structure, thermal time, height model, maximum leaf appearance rate, for example. And down here we've got cultivars. So how are the actual differences between cultivars? Now it's segregated into countries. So China, the US. So if we have a look at the US, for example, we've got Yakura. Now here are the parameters that are differing between, differing from the main variety up here. So there's only five parameters that are different from the base variety up here. So this is minimum leaf number for phenology, vernalization sensitivity, photo period sensitivity so these values are the values that are different from the base value and you can actually go into them and say oh yes well they've altered different constants there so that's why I actually get a different growth response 
Uh, and that's all folks. So I just wanted to show you the under, underneath the hood of the model, so to speak, how it works and gives you a little bit more understanding of the components and the differences between cultivars. But that's all and thanks for watching.